Hey guys, today I am going to be sharing with you guys a um, part one of a lecture I did at BYU Idaho in March of 2023. I thought you'd really enjoy this. We did split it up into two parts because it's a little bit long and uh, it is me talking to the students in an art department for them to understand a little bit more about making money as a uh, as an art student outside in the real world. I hope you really enjoy this. So here we go with part one. So uh, about a year and a half ago, when we started the Surface and Pattern Design Program, I reached out to one of my friends that worked for American Crafts for a long time, um, Lindsay Bowerman. And um, I asked her um, if she would visit my class, and then I said, um, do you know anyone else? And she said, oh, yeah, you, you got you to talk to Karina Gardner. She's doing some really interesting things and she's got some, some great things going on. And so I, re I looked. Um, I looked her up and contacted her, and that semester she came and talked to our class for just uh, a minute. But I've been following her ever since then, and one thing that I really appreciate about, appreciate about Karina is that she's very open and transparent about um, the, the world of design, and she, she, she's going to talk to you about a design model that usually everyone only does the first two steps of, and, um, the, and, I, and I'm... I think you'll be um, interested to find out how you can turn your implementing of work into making money. Um, she has a PhD in graphic design, which is fairly rare. There's just there's just a few, and um, most usually most graphic designers in college have MFAs, but she is a doctor of design, and so we're going to turn the time over to Karina Gardner. Welcome. I was thinking about putting this on my podcast, but my 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 thing is still loading here. Okay, let's get a gauge of the room. So I'm gonna talk about me, but I really want to know about you guys. So if you are a graphic design major, will you raise your hand? Ooh, lots of you. That's lots to work with. Okay, I like it. Photography majors? Okay, a few of you, guess what? What I'm going to say is going to apply to you guys. Um, illustration, fine art people, awesome. Okay, you guys want to learn how to make money too, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, who do I have left? I'm missing someone. There's a group, tell me. Art education. Art education, my art educators. Okay, just a few of you. You guys, you guys will have a job when you're done, but I think you'll like what I'm going to say better. <laughs> That's what I think. Okay, so I'm in the world of design, and what I find is no one in design likes to talk about money. And no one in the art world likes to talk about money. It's like kind of the secret that everyone is holding. Like how they're making money, what they're doing to make money. And so um, I started teaching designers, I have a design program, on how to make money because for the last 15, last 15 years I've made multiple six figures as a designer. Well, that seems a little bit crazy because I hear all the time that if you get into an art degree, you will not make money. And that is just not the case, especially in this day and age. So I am really excited to figure out how the system works. Okay, right, let's go. Okay. First of all, I want you to know that especially where you guys are, the possibilities are endless in this day and age. 15 years ago when I started, there was really only one avenue. I'm gonna tell you how I got started for making some money. But now, you do not have to rely on contracts. You guys know what a contract is, right? So I'm, I'm a fabric designer for Riley Blake. They're a big quilting manufacturer. And I had to get a contract with them in order to design fabric with them, okay? It used to be that that was the way of the world. I was the creative director of a scrapbooking company called Cardabella. It's the sister company of Echo Park. And in order to make that money, I had to contract designers to work with me. I had a team of about six designers in order to, for them to make money and for me to make money, okay? But the wonderful thing about the way the world works now is that there are so many ways that photographers 
artists and designers can make money online. And that's what I teach my designers to do now. In fact, 90% of my income over the years has come from online sales. Okay? So, I want you to know the possibilities are endless. The markets continue to grow, and there are so many ways for you to make money by you figuring out what's unique about you. Okay. I'm just gonna move this whole thing up here. Okay, I guess it's Look at this pretty picture of me with my fabric. Okay. The first thing you need to know is the experiences you guys are gonna have in the first three years after college matter the most. Why? Because whatever those experiences are, are gonna dictate where you go. For me, I got into digital scrapbooking, okay? And so that landed me in the crafting and the surface pattern world. I didn't realize that's what was happening, but that's what was happening, okay? How many of you want to own your own design business or photography business or, or art business? Raise your hand if you're thinking you want to own your own. Okay. How many of you want to go work for a company? You want to go in-house, you want to go corporate? Okay. Okay, that's 50-50. That's about right. Okay. Now, the things I'm going to talk about, I do own my own design business, but I want you, those of you who want to go work for a company, so I worked... I, I taught at the University of Minnesota for five years when I was getting my PhD, and I taught after I finished there as adjunct faculty. And the, the kids I was teaching, I taught generally the juniors and the sophomores most of the time. But the seniors were working on capstone projects, and they were trying to get into Target or 3M, because those were the big companies in town in Minneapolis, okay? So what I'm about to say to you all, I am talking about design business, but if you can think about it in terms of climbing the ladder in whatever corporation you end up being in, right? Production assistant, then junior designer, then senior designer, then creative director, then senior creative director, like those mobility. Like I want you to think about how you can use the things that I'm gonna talk to you guys about to make yourself so good at what you do that anyone above you wants to hire you, keep you, move you up in the ladder. And those of you who want to own your own business, you have to be so good, okay? And you can be so good at what you do that you are irreplaceable, okay? All right, this is a lovely picture of me 20 years ago. This is my graduation day for my PhD. I had a three-year-old and I had a two-week-year-old, year-old, two-week baby. I, I walked across the stage with her for my PhD. So I really um, wanted to stay home with my kids, but I had racked up three degrees of student debt. Does anybody know anything about student debt? Okay, so, and my husband, um, who was in law school at the time, had also done a master's degree. And so we had, he didn't finish his master's degree. He's gonna hate that I say that. But we had five degrees, five and a half degrees between the two of us, and that we had to pay back. So it meant I didn't really have an option. I had to work somehow, okay? And even though I loved teaching, I decided to take that moment to start designing. So I have been doing a little bit of freelance design. Is anybody taking on freelance design right now? Doing it a little bit? I like it. I like it. You guys, the more experience you get, the faster you will grow and make money. Okay, so if you can take on the side logo job, the side brochure, whatever, do it. Okay. So I was doing some freelance work and one of my friends at the time, this is 15 years ago, you guys, said, you know, there's this really hot thing, Karina, you should try it out. It's called digital scrapbooking. Now, I wasn't even a scrapbooker. I thought I, you know, I finished a PhD in design. I thought I was gonna create like cool, minimalistic Bob Dylan posters and like just all the coolest stuff ever. I was like, crafting? I'm gonna do crafting? But she was like, it's like such an easy market to get into. So I was like, okay, 
I'm gonna try this. Now, this is back when you had to build your own website. There weren't easy websites. I bought a Dreamweaver book. I learned how to write HTML, and I built a website. And I started putting products up every single day, little six packs of 12 by 12 papers, okay? I did this for 11 months, and I made hardly any money at all. And I was like, what am I doing wrong? I have all this product, it's all pretty good, I am a designer, and I'm not making any money. Um, I made over those 11 months $300. So I say hardly any money, I mean hardly any money, $300, okay? So I was a little devastated. I was like, man, maybe I shouldn't be teaching design, but like, I can't even sell anything. So I went to a couple of friends and I said, listen, I've been doing this for 11 months. I haven't made any money. And um, she said, well, why don't you check out, there's this website called Two Peas in a Bucket. They don't exist anymore, but they were the biggest manufacturer, not manufacturer, distributor for physical scrapbooking products. Like they physically sent you your scrapbooking products that you ordered online. And she said, they're starting a digital scrapbooking shop. You should apply there. I said, okay, I will. So I applied there, and they took a huge chunk of my royalty. And I was like, ah, oh, this seems like, I don't know, like I made 100% on my own website. These people wanna take, I, I wanna say it was 40%. It might have been only 20%, but I swear it's 40%. You guys, I'm with people who take 80% now, okay? So I'm just gonna say 40% was actually great. I didn't know that back then. So they took a huge portion. The first month that I was there, I uploaded. And the first month I was there, I made $300. Even with them taking commission. And I thought, huh, now that's interesting. I've been doing this by myself for 11 months, I made $300. I hand all my products over to this other site, and they make me $300 the first month. That's an aha moment. And if those of you have not figured out what I've just said yet, it's that you guys are designers, you're artists, you're photographers, you're not audience builders. You need to go to a place that will promote for you. Now, once I figured this out, within three or four months, it's making $1,000 a month. I did that career on two pieces in a bucket. I was doing about $4,000 a month. Within three months of being there, I had gotten a scrapbooking contract, which was making me about $8,000 per contract. Within six months, I was doing fabric, which made me about $15,000 a year, okay? So you can see how it starts growing faster and faster and faster. All because I figured out that I was a designer, not an audience builder. How many of you have thought it would be really great to have your own website with your own cool designs on it? Raise your hand if you have thought that would be cool. Okay, good. That is typical, right? I have a website right now. I have 300 products on it. We sell hardly anything on it. We sell everything on all the other platforms I'm on. Okay? All right? So you can see why this is better than 15 years ago. 15 years ago, there weren't very many platforms. Now, there are tons of platforms, okay? So, in my career, in the last 15 years, I am, I've been to a, I've been designing fabric for a different couple of companies. I've designed scrapbooking papers as the creative director of a scrapbooking company. And I have designed online, I'm currently in nine shops, okay? Nine online shops in different mediums within the craft and the surface pattern business. I will tell you that I have made consistently multiple six figures, okay, before I started my own design program, which I started two years ago. Now we do a little bit more than that, okay, and I have a team. But individually, by myself, without any help, without other people helping me, as an individual artist and designer, you can make multiple six figures. I don't know how many people have told you guys that, but I am here to tell you it's possible. It's easier and harder than you would think, okay, if you're willing to put in the work. 
All right, so I, I had a, a book just come out just a month ago, um, and it will be available tomorrow if you want to come by, and we'll have a few available um, that you can purchase if you would like, or you can just simply go to Amazon, because that's where it, it is. I'm going to go over a couple of the models and talk to you guys, and I also want to be able to answer your guys' questions, because I'm very open about money. Um, I think that you should be able to, as an artist and designer, a photographer, as an art educator, you should be able to support your families when you leave this degree. I want you to be able to support your family. So I'm going to try to support you in any way I can, okay? All right. The num there are two things, you guys, really, two things that matter here. The first one is design. This is why my book is called Design, Profit, and Prosper. And the second thing is profit. How good your design work is, or if you're, insert word here, photographer, illustrator, okay, just put that word in there. How good it is, and two, how to make sales, okay? All right, so let's, let's talk about design, okay? You guys like this one? This one makes me laugh, okay? Don't be happy, worry. Right? So this is good design matters, okay? Because people get it wrong all the time, right? You are not. How, this one's my favorite. <laughs> Graphic design is my passion, and I'm going to put it in purple in a terrible font where I can hardly read it, and Photoshop in a raccoon, but not even extract him. Okay? <laughs> Nothing is possible, you guys. It's just not. It's not. This is like motivation at its best, right? Someone wasn't paying attention to the colors here. All right. I, I was thinking, who, who approved this? Who, someone? Yeah, I think there, there are other things happening here. Because someone approved this, and I don't know how, okay? See if you can find one on this one. <laughs> oh, someone got it over here. This arrow is pointing to Northwest. All right, so here's the thing. The actual design work, look at it. It's pretty good, you guys. It's not horrible. In fact, I think it's pretty good design work. It's just wrong. <laughs> Because it's the northeast region pointing to the northwest, okay? So, good designers are profitable designers. Why? Because they get things straight. So, we're going to talk about, this is one of the models in my book. It's called the Good, Better, Best model. I used to teach this in my graphic design foundation class at the University of Minnesota. And it works on two levels, okay? The first level is in your actual micro design work. So this is a damask that I made in my line called Chow Bella, which came out in November for Riley Blake. So the initial damask I drew was this green damask. I was just throwing a color on it. I was trying to check out the contrast in it, right? So it's just kind of figuring it out and looking at the shape and figuring that out, okay? That was just good. It's fine. Maybe could I sell it on this line? Yeah, I could probably sell this online. Someone's not gonna know it's not my best work, right? But then I decided I'd put it to pattern, and you can see how I start filling in the negative space and creating basically two patterns here. The main damask, and then kind of this bell-shaped damask that all works together so everything feels filled in, okay? So that's better. If you didn't see the best, I think better, you'd been like, oh, the better is just fine, okay? But what happens at best in your work is that it becomes more intricate, it becomes more interesting. It, you'll notice the shape, it's a little softer, it's like a little wider at that base, okay? But it's really intricate inside, you can see all those organic shapes, okay? That ended up being the final damask for that line. So good, better, best works on the micro level, on your individual work, okay? But it also works on, the second level, okay? So let me, let me go through this before I show you guys the next one. So 
when you're looking at your overall work, and I've got 15 years of work, you guys just have your school work right now, but eventually you're going to have a body of work. And most of the stuff that you're gonna create, especially during school, is just gonna be good. Why? Because you're still learning the software, you're still figuring things out, it is okay, okay? You're gonna be striving for your best, but the truth is, what you're making right now will not be your best stuff. The stuff you make in 15 years, it's gonna be your best stuff, okay? But you're striving for best, okay? So very often good is that software skill level, okay? Better tends to be visual clarity and focus. So you saw in the example with the Damask, my overall work, as I get past worrying about software, making sure things fit, it comes from my brain into the computer the way I want it to, to I start being able to explore more about the clarity, how I'm giving solutions, how the logo makes sense, how people are using it. And really the best is when it becomes really customer appropriate and high functionality. So let's just take a look at this example. So someone didn't think through this whole process. That is what happens at the best level, okay? Because by the time you're done, you're not too cool to do drugs, you're just drugs. <laughs> okay? So functionality is huge, especially for designers. We should be thinking about function. Form is really important as well, but we should be thinking about function and kind of figuring out how things work. Now, so in my book, one of the examples I gave was I have several people that are own very big companies and one of them I said I just can't find someone to do a logo for me that I like and I said okay well I'll do it for you and so we got on took us one hour really quick and went through the process of building her a logo now if you are someone like me who's owned multiple businesses and I have to build logos all the time I built a logo for Cardavella scrapbooking company I built the logo for our new upcoming coming company that's opening up next month I built the logo for Karina Gardner Inc. I built the logo for Mini Lou, which is our physical products company. So once you've built a lot of logos, guess what? You know what works and doesn't work. You, you see how open the typeface is, or how tight it is, or how script looks weird, or how the lettering doesn't work. And so it's really easy to then put together a logo that's highly functional, that's super readable, that can show up on a website, that can show up on a shirt, and it's all gonna make a lot of sense, okay? That just comes with experience, you guys. So the more logos you build, the better you're gonna get at it. And the more you will avoid problems like this pencil issue. Okay, because you will just figure out functionality, okay? I love this quote, I actually heard it from Rory Vaden, so I can't take credit that I heard, heard it from Larry Wingett, but you are, your goal is to find your uniqueness and exploit it in the service of others. So if you're a photographer, and perhaps you wanna sell on a place like, we're gonna talk about platforms in a second, Shutterstock, why are people buying your photography? If you're creating illustrations, why are people buying your illustrations? What are they gonna use them for? Are they gonna make logos with them? Are they gonna make craft items with them? So you need to be thinking about the actual way that you can serve people with your design work. If your design work or your photography or your art is self-serving, guess who it serves? Self. So if you can think about how you can bring value to other people with your art, you will not have to worry about money, guys, okay? All right, um, this is the paper that got me my creative director job. Now, it doesn't look like that much, but back then, it was really difficult. Most designers didn't know how to build uh, just like distressing brushes. And that kind of became my specialty. So I started figuring out how to use clip art in a way that worked for the industry at the time. I ended up with this full collection. And I brought it in and I made sure it was functional, that digital scrapbookers liked it, that scrapbookers liked it. And it's the thing that got me my job for my creative director position. Um, this I'm gonna show you guys right here. So 
<clears throat> exploiting your uniqueness. So it took me several years just to kind of get a handle on the markets, on the platform. So I told you I was on two peas in a bucket, right? Then I moved to another digital scrapbooking platform. Now I'm in lots and lots and lots of fields, but one of the fields I love being in is the Silhouette and Cricut field. Does everybody know what a Silhouette or a Cricut machine is? Okay, so a cutting machine, right? So um, for Silhouette, I have worked for many, many years, have my own shop with them. I've taught through them to Michaels Corporation. So if you go on the Michaels website, like I've taught a lot of their courses. And so I, I got to a place and you guys, this will happen to you, especially if you do what I do, or anything close to what I do, a few years ago where I got a little bored. I was like, oh man. And, and just so you guys know, I have 10,000 products just in this one shop, okay? Maybe more, I've never fully counted them, okay? And I was like, how do I outdo myself? Like, I needed something fresh, something new. And I just thought, my most popular product is uh, this little gingerbread house. Let's see if I have it. This one right here, okay? It was one of my most popular products. It was part of a big Christmas village that I had built. And I thought, what if I just make it bigger? That's what I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try making it bigger. Now, if you work with paper and you only have, let's see if I, I don't think I have it. You guys know what an eight and a half by 11 sheet looks like, this is big, right? Or a 12 by 12 sheet. It's really hard to make things bigger, which is why nobody does it, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was like, how am I gonna do this? So, so this first picture you see of me is me like on video, I'm on YouTube going, how do I figure out this structure? Like, I don't know if I can make this work, I don't know if it will stand, all that good stuff. And turned it into the ultimate gingerbread house. So this is, this is it right here. Okay, okay, this, and figuring out how to cover it, right? Like, there are seams here. You guys see the seams up there, right? So figuring out how to cut it. Okay, so this is made out of all eight and a half by 11 by 12 by 12 papers, okay? And I had to do that because it had to be functional for the end user, and we sell this digital file on my website. Two years later, Silhouette calls me and goes, hey, Karina, we're coming out with a new machine. And I'm like, oh, what is it? What is the machine? It's a 24 inch cutter. So you can cut 24 inch papers. I was like, okay, that's freaking cool. Okay, so it's called the Silhouette Pro. And they said, will you make something on it? And I said, okay. <laughs> So it's starting to run out. I'm gonna have to build another one. But I believe that if you are willing to push the boundaries a little bit with your design work, you will get seen. This video of me making this goes viral every Christmas for me making this. Okay? So um, it's just, I was just willing to push the boundaries a little bit. Now, this is my best work because I was pushing the boundaries. I will tell you that 70 to 80% of my work is what I would consider just good or better. Very small amount of your work will be best and it's the stuff that will get you seen, okay? All right, um, the other thing I really like to do is I come out with a fabric line every year, except for apparently this year because I haven't gotten around to it. But um, my goal is always to make a better fabric line than I did the previous year. So this line came out, Chow Bella came out, and I have some rolls of it, so if you come tomorrow, you can see it in person if you would like. Um, and I came out with this line in November, and it's done very well. I've loved this line. I've been able to do a lot of things with it. And it's just because I've kind of figured out how to make quilting patterns work together. There's an actual formula here, and many of you might not see it, but let's just see. Okay, so you'll notice there are at least three peach solid backgrounds. Do you guys see that? There's actually four. Do you see there are three pink backgrounds? How about three yellow? How about three blue? How about there's four maybe, okay? 
but you'll notice they don't go together. They're not in the exact same line. So what you're seeing is per collection, there is six fabrics that are usually sold together. But the goal is to make it so that all 18 go together so the shop owner feels like they have to have all 18. <laughs> okay? So, building collections takes time. My first collections, not nearly this sophisticated. And you might be like, well, the artwork's not super sophisticated. It's more about the marketing, you guys. And you need to start thinking the way your clients are thinking, the way shop owners are thinking, the way people are buying your stuff, okay? Um, over the years, the other thing um, I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about, oh gosh, you guys, I don't have enough time. I could sit and talk to you guys about money and making money for the next three hours, um, is, uh, is making sure that you are using your product so your end user knows how to use it, right? So we have a lot of ebooks showing people how to make all of these different things, okay? This is a haunted house village. This is kind of what I got known for. This is another ultimate project, okay? So your goal, you guys, is to find your uniqueness and get the experience necessary to build a successful brand. And just so you guys know, now this is the thing I teach to my own mastermind, okay? Um, I'm gonna skip over this because we gotta get to profit, you guys. Okay, so let's talk about profit for one second, okay? Raise your hand if you wanna make money when you are finished with your degree. If your hand isn't up, you should not be here. <laughs> I want all of you to make money, okay? Many of you have student loans to pay back, okay? I just looked this up. This is what a typical graphic designer makes when they come out of college and about what they make over the lifetime of their career. If you decide you want to really go for it, I'm gonna tell you right now, creative directors make a lot more than this. So what, what I'm saying isn't just for those of you who own, wanna own your own business, but those of you who want to work the corporate ladder, you can make a lot more than this as well. I negotiated much more than this for a designer to come into Cardabella, okay? Because I said, he is worth it, Let, I think we should bring him in at this X amount. Okay, and the CEO said, I agree, okay? So, you can make more than this in corporate, especially at the higher levels, and if your artwork is good. So, it's all on the artwork and how good you can make it. I will tell you, I, as a business owner, you will make a lot more than this, okay? If you do some of the things I tell you to do, okay? All right, so design plus sales or profit equals design business, okay? So these are the four things I wanna talk about. If I have time, I really wanna go through the design process with you. I think Scott wants me to go through that, that process with you because it's fantastic. Um, but let's just see if we can fit in it. If not, I will for sure talk to you, those that come tomorrow through it, okay? So number one, we have to find a marketing vehicle to sell through. Now, we're gonna dig into this. Number two is to do market research. Number three is to educate your customers. And four is to stay in your own lane, okay? So in the book, you're gonna keep that there's a whole chapter on social media, okay? So one, find a marketing vehicle to sell through. So this is not social media. If you guys think you can make sales through, through social media, it is rare, it is difficult, I don't recommend it. Remember what I said at the very beginning when I said I tried to build my own website on my own site and I was trying to build an audience basically at the same time, but then when I went to somewhere else that already had an audience, I started making money? Guys, this is social media. It's just, it's just set up a little bit different than what happened to me. You guys are trying to build, not you guys in particular, but people are trying to build design businesses, photography businesses, all of that on social media is a great place to build a brand. It is a very difficult place to make sales. Instead, you should be making sales on a platform, okay? And there are multiple platforms out there. I will tell you a few right now. Etsy, Shutterstock, Adobe Stock, Creative Market. Um, I know print-on-demand sites, as Scott had talked about, Redbubble, that's a platform. Okay, so we are looking for audiences that already exist, not ones that we have to produce. 
Just think about your buying behaviors as a customer. Who do you trust online? Maybe a website that has some foreign language on it that says they're gonna ship to you in one or two weeks or are you gonna trust Amazon? Yeah, you're gonna trust Amazon. Okay, so when you're out there on your own website, even though people know who I am and I have a bigger brand, people still are feeling more willing to buy my stuff on the Silhouette website or my Etsy website or Shutterstock. They're more willing to buy there because that's a safer place. They know that if they have a customer service issue with my stuff, there's someone that's gonna back them up, right? Whereas on your own website, there's gonna be more difficulty with that, okay? Now, finding a platform is not just online shops, even though I love online shops, you guys. Online shops is where it's at. But it's also a fabric manufacturer. It's a contract, any kind of contract you get. It's a freelance contract with a client, okay? All right. Um, doing market research, okay? So what you're gonna do, for those of you who are thinking through this right now, like, okay, I am gonna start a business or I am gonna get that corporate job where I'm gonna be like the best ever, okay? is what you're gonna do is you're gonna try multiple things and then see what makes money for your business. Now, every person is different. We have 150 people at Design Suite right now and every single one of them, even though I can direct them all on similar platforms, are all doing really different things, which means that different things sell for them. The same is for you. Okay, so this is uh, the back end of Silhouette. I think this particular month, this is November 2020, I did 116,538 downloads. Okay? It's a lot of downloads. This is why I'm telling you, you can make money. So what I do is I go through my, my um, listings here, and you'll notice I have highlighted here 25 Days of Christmas 6x9 album poinsettia. It sold 192 pieces that month. Okay, and actually when I went down the list, this was not the highest. There was some that had sold like 300 or 400 pieces, but this was on the front page, so I grabbed it. So what I would do is you're gonna do your own market research on what you're doing. So that means when I'm selling even 100 things, we go look at the 100 things and we see what has been downloaded the most. And we make more of that. It's very simple. So. This 25 Days of Christmas 6x9 album, you also see that there's a 25 Days of Christmas 6x9 presence layout, but it's not an album. And so I probably went back, in fact, I know I did. I have multiple 6x9 albums now because that one did so well. Does that make sense? You're doing your own market research because you, just by looking at other people's shops and seeing what they're doing, will not tell you whether you're doing a good job or not. What you're gonna see is your unique style, the way you draw, the way you're producing your art, that is going to determine your market of people who are gonna buy from you, okay? And so whatever is selling well in your shop is what you need to do more of. One of my most popular items, you guys, is a, um, what is it? It's a, it's just like space, it's like a space dingbat. Do you guys know what a dingbat is? It's like, 26 illustrations all set up in a font, packaged to packaging technique, okay? And uh, it's one of my best sellers. Space, just like a random thing with a bunch of planets in it. Guess what I made more of? Space stuff. I made space kitties. I made space astronauts, okay? So you should be doing your own market research. Okay, educate your customers. So. This is where you do use social media. So social media to educate and entertain your customers. Now, I will tell you that most of the years I have done social media, it was to educate, not necessarily to entertain. It was mostly to educate, and it was to help with customer service issues. Nobody likes customer service issues. It's the worst, okay? As my team, like we have two team members, unless you count Crystal, my office manager, who's also looking at it, who has to deal with customer service. Not fun, okay? So you're gonna do everything you can to alleviate that. So we love that with YouTube. YouTube is a great place to post how to make things. So we show every tutorial, show them how to make it. And so when they're running into an issue, we're like, oh, just go watch that video on YouTube. It almost always solves everything. 
And for the most part, we actually don't have a lot of customer service issues with our designs because people can just simply go to the YouTube channel and figure out how I make things. Even these gingerbread houses, you guys, on the YouTube channel, you can literally, without buying the file, you can see how I make it. And so it just makes it really easy for people to understand how they can make it. And here's the other thing, it gets them excited and they wanna buy more stuff, okay? So it works both ways. All right, this is the biggest thing, and I, I had a talk with um, some of your instructors about this, and this is one of those things that scares people because they think that, they, especially they see me and they say, oh, Karina, she does fabric, she does fonts, she does uh, die cut files, she does clip art, she does stickers, she has multiple brands, but I'm here to tell you that when you do one thing and you do it really well and you do it to the best of your ability for a long period of time, that is the designer, the photographer, the artist who actually wins, okay? Long period of time sticking to one thing. For seven years, all I did was silhouette and that's how I have 10,000 designs there and why I make the most, not the most money there. I'm the top 5% there, okay? This is the hardest one for me to convince people to do. And I was just in a meeting with my design suite members. There was the one years. We're all sitting around virtually on our Zoom chat. And they were like, I know Karina's been telling me now for a whole year to just stick to my one thing. And I keep going off and doing this and doing that. And then I come back. And she's like, stop, stick to your one thing, whatever it is, okay? And there's lots of things, you guys, that you can do. The one thing in can be, there's so many things. Just as long as you stick to the one thing, you will make money. You will make money. I have seen it for the weirdest stuff. <laughs> but if you stick to one thing and you do it over a long period of time, you will become the best at it and you will make money at it, okay? I just made you guys all a million dollars and you don't even realize it. <laughs> because it seems so simple, right? It seems so simple, guess what? Especially as creatives, we get distracted really, really easily. And after three months, we wanna do something different. You guys know it's true. You guys are acting like it's not, but it's true, okay? Which is why we all end up in wallpaper, and then we're in fabric, and then we're making stickers. And then we're gonna figure out how to make these gingerbread houses, okay? It's because we get distracted very easily. You know what the hardest thing to do as a creative? The same thing, day in and day out. It is the hardest thing to do. And the ones who stick to the same thing, and make for seven years the same things over and over again, but just put a different spin on it, change the colors, change the proportions. They're the ones who make the most money, okay? I promise you, I just made you guys all a million dollars if someone follows that, okay? So here's my customer service. We just, if you go on my YouTube channel, you'll see like we, we try to tell people how to use the product. The more we tell people how to use the product, the more they buy it, okay? Hey, did you know that you can visit me at makeanddesign.com to learn more about this podcast and join my VIP group for weekly freebies? I can't wait to see you there.